for that, whatever that was. Uh, spontaneity for the perseverance or the perseverance, kind of people for it. I'm going to talk about some very ancient technology for a moment. Um, people are scratching their heads about the future of the CD, but of course there have been other formats long before that, even before vinyl. There was a thing called the 78, and you're all far too young to know what that is, but it used to be this heavy black shellac object, pretty really brittle way of making a record. And my parents had a, a stash of these mouldering away in the attic. I used to dig them out now and get them there. And some of them had good music on. If you could hear it. This is about that. It's called For the Record. With a slow black spiral dance, the inward needle mines gold from gravel, and beauty booms into a back room. King Oliver hollers through hailstorms. Bessie Smith bonfires the blues. Fax Waller fries another love song. Emboldened, we coax echoes through horns, clatter drums into tempo, serenading past masters and future mistresses. Testifying from trucks and bandstands, we orbit those records, reveling in rhythm. That and this next one are the only uh, tracks, I suppose you call them, of the, of the new album. This is a thing called Devotion, and uh, it's about uh, a strange, strange gathering of people. Uh, it's called Devotion. Persisting for decades, well south of the city, a strange sect gathers, preparing in back rooms the odd public ceremony. Rules of the game, each player brings an instrument, takes a seat by rank, opens a large envelope for coded instructions. A count of four <coughs> triggers deep breaths and 16 pairs of hands fling sound across the room, buffeting the air. Booting baritone, saxophone, fretwork, high octane, octave, obstacle, choruses, drum, firework, brass. A bouncing juggernaut in revivalist ritual. A machine, easy to run, just add beer and stand well back. <coughs> this is a, this, last, this next one is a, quite a well-traveled poem. Because uh, many years ago, it was uh, on the inside of many 38 buses oscillating between Victoria and Stoke Newton. It's a kind of some kind of competition about carnivals. I offered this and they uh, stuck it inside the bus. Of course, I didn't make any money out of it. Didn't even get a free bus ride. But anyway, it's called Local Girl Makes Good. It's 10 years old this point. It's today. Yeah, <laughs> Local Girl Makes Good. The tinsel toils over, the crepe paper savoury finally finishes this afternoon in the flourish of feathers, a swarm of kazoos. With helium-hearted balloons and bunting, the lorries are shunting the stock-go shuffle that concertinas the pleated skirts and the tag-along dogs. A truck is delivering unlive music, apt as a poser's flash car disco, trapped in the traffic jam, thumping the air. Fairy tale royalty floats down the high street. The schoolgirls are flushed by the sun and their footwork. The buckets of charity rattle along. It was raining last year, so the queen abdicated. The new one is fated by somebody's dad with a hot dog salute and a beer bottle toast. This is a thing called. Uh,
This concerns um, tulipomania, which you may have heard of. It's a long gone fad, but people went completely bonkers over tulips centuries ago. Yeah, they used to be really expensive. Yeah. They were ridiculous expensive. Yeah. And um, there's a whole chapter of it in a brilliant book called Extraordinary Delusions of the Madness of Crowds by Charles McKay. story in that, in that book. It's called Root of Exchange. It's all here, all this for that which acts in the name of the sovereign. There, steaming in the pen, four fat oxen. Snuffling, snorting, eight fat swine. Mopping up grass, twelve fat sheep. Two lasts of wheat, eight thousand pounds, and double that in rye. Two bulging casts of butter with a thousand pounds of cheese. Thirsty work, such reckoning, hence two hogsheads of wine. Four tons of beer, a year's supply at 19 pints a week. A complete bed, a suit of clothes, a silver drinking cup. All this in 1636 for one single root of the Viceroy, a tulip. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is all about staring off my balcony. These points. This is a thing called At This Hour. Raking through the debris of a stuck poem, I looked up at flailing rain on the dot of two o'clock. Seeming on schedule, a fox trotted across the green, inciting this poem, expelling that one. There we were, my nimble neighbour and I, at two o'clock in the morning, rummaging through rubbish. I thanked him and went to bed. <laughs> Female fury orchestrated by internal combustion engines, swamping screams of rage. Pleas and reasons, emerging stories, surging background roars, blast of anger expels boy into dunstruck orbit. Shock shuffles, spiraling back round to bus stop bench. Words, waves met by lunges, ear slap punctuations, she storms away. Returns on the elastic of unfinished vexation. Impeccable, untouchable, rebounding on paths curved back by a weight of feeling. Sitting, jumping, hissing, spinning, flailing to communicate more incoming messages for his cheek as he reels and circles back for more enlightenment. Shirt is out of shape as the typhoon morning, street crossed and recrossed, a lawn march, a carousel of curses, variations on a theatre of volcanic love, a bus stop for nowhere, a centre of gravity. Then, the fray, frozen, partition and uniform questions. Peace imposed, no charges, all change. steps away, or 29 flaps of a gull's wings. And I sit on my fourth floor balcony, beside the vacant plant pots, scanning the skies for Laris Argentatus, Stercorarius Parasiticus, Diomedea Amsterdamensis, Puffinus Gravis, or Phalacrochorax Atriceps, the Imperial Shag. So far, None of these have I seen, though, as nature and modesty prescribe, I am momentarily absent from the balcony. However, one lunchtime, out there with camera and binoculars, I stepped inside to answer the phone, a date was cancelled, and returned to find my sandwich had gone.
failed attempt to get a new word into the English language, I keep trying. This is a thing called conjuration. This beats alchemy. Before your very eyes, I will create a new being, harmoniously using the power of the mind, magic of words, plus a natural object known for its inner cleansing properties. In the language of our ancestors, a fig is a thing of little or no consequence. In the realm of the psyche, a figment is a fabrication or invention. In the illustrious history of supernatural phenomena, mentalism is a kind of conjuring act. I give you now the figmentalist, a believer in figments. <laughs> Feel free to spread that word, figmentalist, and accuse people of figmentalism whenever you can. It's a, it's a valuable word, that, because there's no... Well, it's obvious now. <laughs> okay. in, the same, in the same way, it's called the seer. Sensitive is my middle name. I sense beyond sense, find flows beneath floors, see apparel's apparition. The ancients instruct me with Californian clarity. Auras vibrate my visions, I fathom the dots of eyes. Somewhere it is written, Babylon or Pluto, that thousands shall be lifted from your bank accounts. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the supernatural. Finally, here's the thing, uh, back to nature, not supernatural, nature, this is it. But being in the park, um, there's a nice little park near an embankment tube station, which is called the Victorian Embankment, because it's nowhere near the Victoria tube station. I think it's called Benchmarks. There he goes, purple shirt, rucksack, jumped jaw, bald head, sandily lurching, flower showing, no one knowing, gunning his gate, dog growled, past violets and spider plants, past fish and chip tourists, dispersing drifting folk from a bandstand stick dance, lapped and flapped by hermaphrodite joggers. Plastic jacket flings bits of baguette, trees shimmer, rustle, shoot out pigeons, shuttlehead slate shape swooping past sandstone, to groom lawns, pick, peck, the tarmac, toss bread, celebration skyward, leaving crusts like children, puffing, strutting, unfancied after stormy females, painting the town white. Gulls ply the river, skimming the sardined tour boats. Two boys rattle along railings in rain click serenade for this cloud taunted June. Sun shines brows of a Robert Burns bronze, frowning, unread, marooned in green, while right here, a six-legged critic scuttles past pencil, looking for hexameter, as airliners amble through cloudscapes beyond the dot blue. Thanks for listening. See you later.